That buzz in your ear, that fleeting shadow you barely noticed. What if it's not an insect? What if it's a military-grade spy drone, smaller than your thumb, sent to watch your every move? For decades, it was the stuff of science fiction, a paranoid fantasy confined to spy thrillers. But today, the line between nature and technology has been officially, and terrifyingly, erased. The age of the insect drone is here, and it's poised to rewrite the rules of everything we thought we knew about surveillance and warfare. Before we begin with this intriguing story, we appreciate that you subscribe to our channel, share, and like our video so that we can bring you more content similar to this one. Thank you so much for your support. Imagine a machine so small it's nearly invisible, so quiet it's mistaken for a fly, yet powerful enough to carry the eyes and ears of a military force into the most sensitive locations on Earth. This isn't a hypothetical concept, it's a reality. We're delving into the chilling world of military micro drones, where the ultimate advantage is measured in millimeters. At the forefront of this revolution is a device unveiled by China's National University of Defense Technology. It's a micro drone the size of a mosquito. This isn't just a tiny quadcopter, it's a mosquito-like bionic robot, a near-perfect mechanical copy of an insect, complete with fluttering, leaf-shaped wings and thread-like landing gear. Designed for covert reconnaissance and special missions, this tiny machine is small enough to rest between two fingers, yet it represents a monumental leap in espionage technology. The idea of insect drones isn't entirely new. The CIA experimented with a dragonfly-shaped listening device called the Insectothopter back in the 1970s. While impressive, it was ultimately defeated by a simple crosswind, proving too difficult to control. But what was once a clumsy prototype has now become a sophisticated reality. The challenge has always been immense. How do you integrate power systems, sensors, control circuits, and advanced materials into a frame that weighs less than a paperclip? It requires a fusion of bionics, micro-device engineering, and material science. The Chinese prototype, for example, flaps its wings up to 500 times per second and can fly stably in strong winds, a feat that was impossible just a few years ago. It's a level of miniaturization so extreme that the chip technology involved could fit the entire text of The Art of War onto a surface the size of a fingernail. And China is not alone. Researchers at places like MIT are also developing insect-inspired robots. Their projects, inspired by fireflies and bees, focus on creating soft, artificial muscles that allow tiny robots to fly with uncanny agility, even performing aerial flips. Some can even emit light, allowing them to communicate with each other on missions, just like real insects. Meanwhile, the US military has already deployed its own palm-sized nano-drones. The Black Hornet 4, a Norwegian-designed marvel, weighs just 70 grams and is used by American soldiers for immediate situational awareness on the battlefield. It provides real-time video, boasts thermal imaging, and is so quiet it's virtually undetectable, giving squads eyes in hostile environments without risking lives. One drone is a spy, but a hundred of them, working together? That's a game-changer. This is the concept of swarm technology, and it's where this technology transitions from merely unsettling to truly revolutionary. Drone swarms mimic the collective behavior of insects like bees or ants. They don't rely on a single human operator controlling each unit. Instead, they communicate with each other, sharing information and coordinating their actions autonomously to achieve a common goal. Powered by artificial intelligence, these swarms can learn from their environment and adapt in real time. Imagine a swarm tasked with surveying a city. It can spread out to cover vast areas in minutes, identify threats, and relay a complete intelligence picture back to its commanders. If one drone is taken down, the others instantly adjust their formation and continue the mission without missing a beat. This makes them incredibly resilient and effective. On the battlefield, this technology completely rewrites the rules of engagement. A study found that using swarms could increase the lethality of drone operations by 50% while simultaneously reducing friendly losses by the same amount. They can provide a moving, 360-degree security bubble for convoys, scout ahead in dangerous urban environments, or even overwhelm an enemy's defenses with sheer numbers. It's a force multiplier that gives a small unit the intelligence-gathering power of a much larger one. So far, we've focused on surveillance. 
But there is a terrifying final question that military planners and ethicists are grappling with. What happens when they're weaponized? The leap from a drone carrying a camera to one carrying a weapon is frighteningly small. We're not talking about missiles. We're talking about something far more insidious. A micro drone could be equipped with a single drop of a potent toxin, a fleck of explosive, or even a biological agent. Because of their size and stealth, they could execute untraceable assassinations, targeting individuals with lethal precision using facial recognition or even their unique biometric signatures like a heartbeat. Imagine a swarm of these killer bees released in a conflict zone. They could be programmed to hunt for specific targets, not just people, but equipment. They could disable vehicles, jam communications, or sabotage infrastructure, all without a single soldier ever stepping foot on the ground. The potential for such weapons to be used for political assassinations or by terrorist organizations is staggering. There's a risk that this technology could lead to a state of permanent, low-level warfare, where attacks are constant, anonymous, and almost impossible to defend against. This raises profound ethical questions. When a swarm of autonomous drones makes a kill decision without a human in the loop, who is responsible? How do you prevent errors? How do you ensure that these weapons, once released, don't fall into the wrong hands or spiral out of control? This is the new frontier of warfare, smaller, quieter, and more dangerous than ever before. The technology is no longer a movie plot, it is happening right now in research labs and on battlefields around the globe. The debate is no longer about if this technology can be built, but how it will be used and controlled. Is this an unavoidable and necessary step for national security in a complex world? Or is it a Pandora's box, a line that should never have been crossed? We're at a crossroads, and the decisions we make today will shape the security and privacy of generations to come. From the CIA's early experiments with dragonfly spies to the AI-driven swarms of today, the evolution has been breathtaking. We've seen how China's mosquito drone perfects the art of bionic mimicry, how MIT is pushing the boundaries of agility, and how the US military is already putting these concepts into practice. We've explored how swarm intelligence can turn hundreds of tiny drones into a single, coordinated entity, capable of overwhelming and outsmarting its adversaries. And we've confronted the darkest potential of this technology, the weaponized micro-drone, an untraceable tool of assassination. The buzz in the air is no longer just the sound of nature. It's the sound of a technological revolution. It's a sound that carries both the promise of unparalleled strategic advantage and the chilling whisper of a future where anyone can be watched, and anyone can be targeted, by an enemy that fits in the palm of your hand. The insect wars are not coming. They've already begun. We hope you enjoy this episode. If you like our content, please subscribe to our channel, like and share our video. We will bring you more content similar to this one. Thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you in our next video.